Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Power Life TV channel, Power Life TV broadcast. This is Restoring Families with Pastor Brian. And Pastor Tasha. We're here to give you another great broadcast. It's Wednesday. Witness Day. I like when you say Witness Day. I know you do. Like <laughs> you know why I like Wednesdays? Though. No, why? It's hump day. Okay. And it's work day. Okay. Work day. I like to work. We're doing uh, our Raymond Cafe tonight, and so I'm always glad to preach the word. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will, will rejoice and be glad in it. So this week, we've been dealing with conflict resolution, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I pray that we uh, are touching some lives and healing some hearts uh, when it comes to this word of conflict. Uh, I think this is an area that a lot of people deal with uh, and they don't know how to handle conflict. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully we can give a little bit of insight on how you can resolve conflict. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so make sure you uh, get on our YouTube page. It is Power Life TV channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, let your friends know, let your family know where we are. Power Life TV channel, we're already at 202 subscribers and we want right. to we want to jump on up to 500 now. So help us out. Tell your family and friends about what we're doing here on Power Life TV channel. Amen? Amen. All right, uh, let's jump back into it. We've been dealing with conflict resolution. Do you want to read the scripture first or you just want sure. to jump into no, we can the go next the point? Scripture. All right, so we... Uh, We've been reading out of Genesis chapters three and verse six, and it says that the uh, then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings, and the and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And then uh, verse 9 and 10 says, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. I have a question for you. Okay. Do you believe that conflict, all conflict, <laughs> uh, is a result of fears? Core oh, fears? absolutely. Yes. And what fears are driving people you know and i know we've done a study in the past and i i don't know if i'm putting you on the spot or not but i know uh, i'm not sure where you i think you want to go somewhere i'm not sure where no, you're going though no just i think it, you already ha you you asked a question already having an answer in you, mind you think so it's that's a rhetorical what I think. question you think yes it's i'm pretty sure <laughs> no. i usually ask questions i already know the answer to well i'm i'm asking you though i know that Men and women have core fears. Right. And do you remember some of those core fears, like the core fear of a woman? Uh, well, you know, there's fear of loss of connection. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, women are very community oriented. So mm -hmm. there's a, a fear of loss of connection. So a lot of a woman's actions will come out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, a core fear of, uh, of secure. They have a our needs reflect our fears mm -hmm. so there's a need for security so the fears mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. associated with marriage are often you know uh, associated with those needs mm -hmm. so the need for security will drive a woman very often to fear yeah. a loss of security. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's a security of the of the relationship, feeling like the secure the relationship is not secure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or long term or something of that nature. Yeah. Or feel feeling as if their spouse is gonna run out and find another lover. Mm -hmm. uh, fear of uh, losing income, fear that the children are gonna get hurt or harmed in some kind of way mm -hmm. by uh, some kind of outside force or action. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I want to deal with the core, some of the core fears of a man. Some of the core fears that men deal with is the fear of not being respected mm -hmm. um, and, and honored. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, men have very big egos, mm -hmm. and when when you when a man feels disrespected, when a man feels 
dishonor. It's hard for him to overcome the conflict that's going on within himself. Right. And we look at James chapter 4 and the Bible says that uh, why are there wars out there? Mm -hmm. Why are there conflicts going on out here? It's because of the conflict and the rage and the war that's on the inside of a human being. And if we can learn to identify these core fears, deal with these core fears, then I believe that we can knock down on some of these conflicts and start having a better, uh, better results when we uh, have an issue with our spouse. So uh, I want to jump back into some of the things that you were listening. Uh, you start, you stopped talking about um, two of the things that God did with marriage mm -hmm. and he talked about the safeguard for children and he also talked about the perfection of our character so what are we going to deal with today when it comes to conflict so the first thing we're going to talk about is how do my actions and reactions affect the people around me mm -hmm. uh, we're going to also talk about how do you break the rhythm of that fear dance mm. that you're doing with your spouse yeah a lot of times we don't recognize that what we're actually doing is a fear dance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So in a conflict, the problem is rarely the real problem. Yeah, yeah. We just talked about mm -hmm. that. So you may come in and complain about something. The mm -hmm. shoes in the middle of the floor is our favorite. That's our favorite go-to, mm -hmm. right? So whatever we're com whatever we're complaining about that's usually not the real conflict mm -hmm. there is a feeling or a fear you could say that's behind the comment mm -hmm. mm. so so help me understand this when when you <laughs> let's say you and i are in conflict which we rarely are <laughs> but you and i are in conflict is it because of how i'm hearing things or maybe you're touching a core fear in my life or, you know, some of the things that um, maybe you're saying that I'm not hearing your hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm just listening to your words. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some of the these core fears? And just like we said earlier, what are some of the things that, you know, it may not be the shoes in the middle of the floor. Right. It may be something that that some trauma in my life that's been triggered. Could be something that happened at work. Yeah. Could be a frustration behind the traffic mm -hmm. or feeling that you're working hard and getting getting nowhere. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you want to see some productivity in your life. Mm -hmm. You come in and you see shoes in the middle of the floor and it just triggers that feeling of I'm not being successful. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times what's coming out is that feeling of I'm not being successful. Mm. The problem That's is good. not the wife. Yeah. The problem is That's not good. the children. Mm -hmm. The problem is that you feel like you put a lot of work into something that is not successful. Mm. Wow. It's not panning out the way you thought it would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, want, I want you to talk about this thing about a fear button getting pushed. Um, so I basically said this. The problem is our core fears an excellent uh, uh, an, an excellent <laughs> an excellent landed conflict rarely has, has anything to do with what is being argued about but it is in fact about a core fear mm -hmm. so whatever we're arguing about that's not what the problem is mm -hmm. it's really a core fear that we're dealing with so when our fear button gets pushed we get uncomfortable mm -hmm. Come and on. we push back mm -hmm. by reacting and so when you see someone react yeah. what's happened is a fear button just got pushed mm. and so they are reacting they're not thinking about a response mm -hmm. to whatever triggered them mm -hmm. they're just mm. reacting uh, you've this heard the good. term knee jerk reaction, reaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we were talking about this, it seemed like on Monday, response versus reaction mm -hmm. and how, you know, a reaction is basically you move off of your emotions with a reaction. Right. But a response is something that you think about, you acknowledge. Right. You know, it comes uh, from a different part of the brain. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You tap into a whole different part of yourself. Right. There's an instinct and then there's, you know, cultivated thinking. Yeah. Wow. And so wow. what you really That's want good. is to have cultivated thinking yeah. at work in your marriage. And you want to be well, you get cultivated. That from cultivated thinking. That's a good word. I like that. <laughs> you need to write that down. <laughs> 
uh, cultivated thinking is just something, it's the habits. Yeah. Uh, you cultivate your thinking with the word of God. Mm. In other words, you mm. tell your mind. The Bible says it this way. It says that uh, make a tree good and its fruit will be yeah. good. Yeah. And make a, tr a tree evil and, its fruit, and its fruit will be evil. So it's saying our, our brain is made mm. to look a lot like the branches of a tree. Yeah. And so it's the ideas that have taken root and branched off in different areas and it's our thinking, our cultivated, habitual thinking mm. that is a driving is a force yeah. uh, very often in the things that we do. But we want it to be cultivated by the Word of God so mm -hmm. that even in a stressful situation, mm -hmm. we can do the right so, thing. So, so when a person has cultivated thinking on the wrong, on the evil tree, you see now why they react the way they do. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like they can't even control themselves. Right. You know, and, 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 and in marriages and relationships, and you see, you know, two people constantly battling about the same issue. Right. So very often when a couple is bickering about something, you can come back a few years later and they're bickering about, about the, the same, same thing. thing. They hadn't grown up yet. They hadn't grown up. They're still in the same battle, in the wow. same war. And so they have not sat down and discussed what is the problem, mm -hmm. first of all, and what is a possible solution. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that we do in marriage counseling is we discuss what is the core problem what is the root problem and what thing could we do differently to address the problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so very yeah. often what we see is that people have gone for years mm. without even they might notice the problem, they might complain about the problem, but they never make a move to fix the problem. Yeah. And, and that's a let's address I know I want you to finish your, your points here, but let's address the, the need for good godly counsel. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that there's safety in a multitude of counsel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you can't figure out how to get past this conflict, sit down with a good mediator. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, sometimes we can't see ourselves in a mm -hmm. conflict. That's so good. All we see is the other person. Yeah. And what we need is the ability to see. That's a good word. And it's really kind of the next thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah. You know, one of the ways we break the rhythm of the fear dance. Now, I want to say this. When we get our fear buttons pushed and we get uncomfortable, mm -hmm. we push back by reacting in such a way that often pushes our spouse's fear button. Fear button. Yeah, that's why we have to talk about those core fears. Of that's fear. why it's a dance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's a dance because once my fear button gets pushed, I'm going to push your fear buttons. Mm -hmm. And now we're in a conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. how do you break this rhythm of the fear dance? We can break the cycle of unhealthy relationships. I'm going to repeat that. We can break the cycle. That's it. That's it. Of unhealthy relationships by first identifying our core fears mm. and by understanding that the other person is not the problem. Mm. In other words, I cannot control other people. Yeah. Once you recognize that you cannot control other people, mm -hmm. you'll stop working so hard to try to get them to do something that they haven't agreed to do. Mm -hmm. You'll work harder on yourself. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the only control we truly have is self-control. Is self -control. So what does that mean? Personal responsibility means I am 100% a hundred, a hundred responsible for my own health. Wow, wow. I am 100% responsible for my own stress. I, 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 I. I, I'm. I want to deal with something here because I just hear in my spirit that people are saying, "How can I change my cultivated thoughts?" Mm -hmm. Wasn't that the word you used earlier? Mm -hmm. How can I change my belief system? Mm -hmm. Because it's it's almost like people are saying, "I know what's the the right way to go," but it's like I can't seem to get on the path. Right. Well, one of the things that I would like to do is, first of all, you need to change your words mm -hmm. and, and the words that you are hanging around. Right. The words that you are 
uh, focusing on. You mm -hmm. know, that's why it's not always good to get on the latest feed when it right. deals with social media because these things Very are feeding true. you and it's shaping your character and shaping your belief system. Then the next thing, the words that you hang around will begin to shape your thoughts. Your thoughts now are going to be begin to form your emotions. Right. Right. And so your emotions will move you to your actions. Mm. And your actions will begin to form your habits. Yes. And what I see in this, this is why this is such a good, good time uh, that we're having. What I see in this, you have habitual individuals right. and belief systems and going in the way that they think is right mm -hmm. and always end up in a stressful situation. But you just said, I'm responsible. I'm responsible. I'm 100% 100 100 responsible. I'm 100% responsible for my own stress. Mm. And I'm 100, say, say the other part, I'm 100% responsible for my own health. Right. And so sometimes what we really need to do is recognize situations that cause us to feel stress. Recognize when yeah. your heart rate yeah. is going up yeah. and when wow. you're getting warm, mm. when your breathing is changing, when you're more fast paced. Now we have these Apple watches. You can put that on and it will tell you mm -hmm. when your heart rate is elevated, when mm -hmm. you're in a state of rest. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> that, happened to me. that that Apple watch will say, looks like something's going on with mm -hmm. you. What's happening? You're here? All right. <laughs> you okay? And so, you know, with that in mind, then we know, wait a minute. I'm probably giving the thing that's causing me stress more attention than I should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, so so the good. first thing you want to do is slow down your own breathing. Yeah. Rather than give as give the stressful situation that much attention, focus on air movement in and out of your lungs. Give your body the signal that you can handle that is good. whatever it is that the enemy is trying to toss your way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, and the enemy will try to toss stress your way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but no weapon that is formed against, against you, you come on. will prosper. Come you on. have to, and and you know Preach. that might be a saying that we have very often. But when you're That's in the so midst good. of a stressful situation, it's a good thing to state. From your in your heart, no weapon mm -hmm. that is formed against me mm -hmm. will prosper. Mm -hmm. Whatever is trying to come against me and cause me stress, it's not going to work. Yeah. And so, once yeah. you take control and take a hold of your own mm -hmm. uh, stress, and you get responsible for that, then we can realize that marriage does not cause our problem. It doesn't cause our problems, and it does not solve, solve our, problems. our problems. Say it again. Marriage does not solve our problems. Wow. Marriage only reveals our problems. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. other words, we said earlier mm. that marriage is for the perfecting of the character. So mm. when pressure is applied through marriage, all it's doing is exposing the problems that are already seated. Yeah. Seated, you could say, yeah. in your heart. Yeah. There are some things that have taken root in your heart and sprung up mm. and you never even noticed. You know that. But because you're so close to this other person, they notice it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. They're likely to call you out on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And while you want to deal with that person, God says to you today, that because your spouse has revealed to you the very thing that has been causing a problem in your life, mm -hmm. the wise thing to do is take hold of your own personal stress mm -hmm. and deal with this thing that has been uh, a hindrance and a barrier yeah. to where you really want to go in Th life. That's why it's, it's so important that uh, to the single people right now, get whole. Get whole. Don't don't date somebody just so that you can fulfill the void that's in your life. You know, nobody can fill that void. That's right. Only Jesus can fill that void. Mm -hmm. So get whole and then get in a relationship 
that you can begin to trust one another. Right. You know, our heart is, first of all, become a friend to the one that you could possibly call your spouse one day. Yes. That must be the foundation because when you're my friend and you are my friend, mm -hmm. my best friend, you can call some things out in me. Now, I may not like to hear it. <laughs> and Tabasco oh. sauce may start percolating. You remember those old percolators? But Tabasco sauce might start percolating in my veins. But you're my friend. <laughs> and, and because I trust you. Mm -hmm. You know, we may have to take a time out because we going back and forth. Mm. But eventually we do come back together. Well, arguing is a good thing. Mm. It means that you respect each other. Yeah. You you respect each other enough That's a good to word. not push your own mm, feelings, beliefs, thoughts on the other person. You're willing to discuss it at least. Yeah. Without being so rigid that there's no discussion. No mm. need to talk to him about that. Yeah. Because he's not going to change his mind. Yeah. That is not a relationship. That is slavery. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and this, may, this may be your next point, but I, I do want to address this before our time is up. Uh, what about avoidance? What about... That's a whole nother subject. It's a whole nother subject? That's so me. So can we hit another day? <laughs> Most definitely. I want to talk about that. But you, you, well, I will say this. You know, avoiding a conflict will not make it go away. Exactly. It will not make it go away. So... Uh, a wife or a husband is not responsible for making me happy. Mm -hmm. My personal happiness has to come from the Lord. It has to be yeah, an overflow right. Right. of my relationship from God. So if I'm generally happy, it should not just be because of another person. Mm -hmm. It should be, you know, one of the added things, a, a byproduct mm -hmm. of something that's already taken place yeah. in my heart. And now it's one of our marriage benefits. Mm -hmm. I cannot, how about this, control my spouse. I cannot change him or her or help him or her change. change. Mm. That's not something I can do. Mm. So now, good. the Holy Spirit can. I can pray for my spouse mm -hmm. and God can change mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God can change yeah. anyone. Yeah, God wants he to work miracles. He changed you. Yeah, that's right. He wants to work miracles. So when we pray for somebody, and we might often pray for somebody to change, mm -hmm. but in the process of praying for them, you're going to change. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the only one that I can truly change is myself. Mm -hmm. So my limitations and irritations are inside of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm enemy. in control of that. The enemy is my enemy. My enemy is my enemy. Yeah. So if you really want to cultivate a, a good and happy and harmonious home, create a safe place. Yeah. Hold that one. We're going we're gonna to pick that up tomorrow. Okay. Let's, let's do that one tomorrow. Okay. I'm excited about this. And I, I'm telling you, I pray that you receive this word. This is so good. Mm. You know, we have, we have mastered the fundamentals when it comes to marriage and family. Mm. And um, are we are we doing everything perfect? No. Do, right. do we have issues from time to time? Well, yes. But we've learned how to work through things. Right. And you want to get a hold of a good model. You know, my wife and I have been married for almost 27 years. Praise the Lord. Not many of our friends can say that they were married that long. You know, right. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Uh, when we came out of college, a lot of our friends got married and got divorced like within the same year, you know? And so uh, this is something that we, we're we not novices at. We've spent time learning these things, and training yeah. in these things. And so we want you to come back, watch these broadcasts, share these broadcasts. I know it's helping you. Let it help somebody else. Amen? Amen. Amen. We also want to give you an opportunity to sow into these messages. Listen, this this one little seed that you sh that you sow today can meet the need that you've been dealing with in your relationship. We well, said, Pastor, I just like to avoid. I don't even like conflict. I don't want to deal with conflict. Well, let the seed give you the courage to deal with the conflict that you've been avoiding. Amen. Uh, because because what what sowing does is it causes you to come out of your comfort zone. That's true. You know, we, we like to hold on to our money for what? Rainy day. Mm -hmm. And and so giving helps you come out of that comfort zone and it allows you to trust in a greater. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Amen. So let God deal with your marriage by sowing into him, sowing into his ministry. Help us get this word out all over the world. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the people today. The, the Lord, Lord bless you and keep you. The, the Lord, Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We declare shalom and blessings, blessings over your life. And we declare that Jesus is Lord and he's upholding all things by the word of his power. Be blessed. We love you and we'll see you next time.